You're already starting to shape up into a TypeScript Pro, so let's continue. We can learn about type narrowing, which is narrowing types to a more specific type. And this is just terminology, right? Because we already done these things before, but again, repetition, 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 repetition. Let's just repeat it so we make sure we understand how these things work and have confidence, right? So we can create a function get Pokemon by type, and we're going to have Pokemon type, which is going to be fire water or electric. Awesome. Let's create the function and then we can narrow the type. Pokemon type, fire, then we're going to, oops, then we're going to return, just copy this over, fire type Pokemon. So at this point, if you hover over, it should be all the types, so fire, water, and electric because it didn't narrow it down yet. And if you say Pokemon type, equals water, then we can return water type Pokemon. Just copy this over. Yeah, we can say return water type Pokemon. So if we hover over the Pokemon type at this point, it can only be water or electric, right? So we can say Pokemon type here, what it is after all these checks, and it narrowed it down to electric. And we've already seen in the past before, but yeah, here it is. So we can also return if it's not anything else, we can say return electric type Pokemon. And then, of course, you can call it and get the electric type. So let's do this for fun. Get Pokemon by type electric. Let's run this code. And of course, <laughs> we should console log it out. Just this. Yeah, let's just run this code. And everything should be fine. Electric type Pokemon. So let's appreciate for a moment how cool it is that TypeScript just knows the type we're dealing with based on as TypeScript says it, analyzing the code flow. Yeah, so let's look at the next example where we can use type narrowing using the in operator, which isn't a TypeScript specific thing, but we can use it to check if a property is inside an object. So let me just close this and then I'm going to delete this. So let's create a type fire. It's going to have a flamethrower. Ooh, turns nothing. So we can say void and then let's create a type water. So you can say water, whirlpool, and then yeah, let's create another one. This is going to be electric, right? This is really fun, just chill, typing out types, right? Thunderbolt, yep. And then we can create a function, Pokemon attack, which is going to have Pokemon type, and the type can be fire, water, or electric, right? And this is already awesome. So let's do some checks. So we can say if flamethrower, and you can use the in keyword, Pokemon, then we can say Pokemon flamethrower, because we have our awesome completion. Then we can say if whirlpool in Pokemon, and say Pokemon whirlpool. Because TypeScript is aware you can only use this certain method. So for example, let me just reiterate, we can't go here and just use any of the methods. We can't use Whirlpool or any other methods, right? So it can only be Flamethrower. And this is really awesome how we can give you this contextual typing. And same here, let's just do it again, right? For funsies, Whirlpool. How awesome is that? And then if we say if Thunderbolt in Pokemon, of course, can you guess what the option is going to be? Don't cheat. <laughs> of course, Thunderbolt. Yeah, so this is really awesome. So let's just create the Pokemon cons Pokemon. Say name Pikachu. Let's give it, oops, let's give it Thunderbolt. You can say console log. Let's give it some backticks. Say this name used. Oh, so let me copy over this part. Yeah. Let's use Thunderbolt. And then you can say Pokemon attack. And we can pass it Pokemon. Everything is going to be fine. So let me just see. Okay, we already have a console lock. So let's just, again, run it for fun. It should work. Pikachu use Thunderbolt. Watch out. So if you remember from a previous example, there's a distinction between the constructor new date that returns an object and the function date that returns a string. So in the same way how we use the in operator, we can use instance of to check if a value is an instance of another value. So let me just close this and then let's create a function log date is going to accept a date or string right. And then we can check for it. So we can say if date instance of 
date. In that case, we can return the date. We can say to UTC string, whatever. Otherwise, we know we should uppercase it probably. Date to uppercase. Yeah. So let's just log the date. Date. And we also have log date, which is going to be the one with the constructor. New date. So the first one is going to return a string. The other one is going to return an object. So if we run our code here, we should see the output. Yeah, so it works as expected. Beautiful, right? So of course you can read more about narrowing in the TypeScript documentation that covers some plain JavaScript concept. If you're not familiar with these concepts such as truthiness and equality checks, which aren't part of TypeScript. So let's have a look at TypeGuards, but first I'm going to close this and let me remove this code. So this really isn't anything new. These are just terminologies we can go over and again, make sure we understand what it means. A TypeGuard is a check against the value returned by type of. So because TypeScript often knows more than us about some intricacies of JavaScript, it can save us from some JavaScript quirks. We already explored this before, but let's go over it again. So for example, we can have a function log Pokemon going to be a Pokemon, it's going to be a string, an array, or null, if you remember, you can say if type of Pokemon is equal an object, because we're doing this naive check to check if the Pokemon is an array, so we can loop over it, and you can say Pokemon for each, and as you can see, like, automatically it protected us if it's undefined, so if you remove this, it's going to give us a warning, so hey, this can be null, right? So let's keep this, so you can say Pokemon, console log, Pokemon. So yeah, so that's it. So if we go here, like we can quell this problem by specifying this. So also don't forget because we have the, let me go, TS config. This is only shown because we have strict set to true. Otherwise this problem wouldn't show, but you're always going to use strict. So you should have it on. So you get all the benefits of TypeScript, right? So TypeScript lets us know that Pokemon type was narrowed down to the type of string array or null instead of just string. So in log Pokemon, we naively check if Pokemon is an array by checking if it's an object. But a problem with JavaScript is that it treats also null as an object. And this is what could also happen. So again, I'm going to show you this. Here we go here. And if we go into node, we can say type of null. And you can see it's an object. So next, let's talk about another spooky sounding term, type predicates. What is that? Basically, type predicates are a special return type that's like a type guard for functions. So we're going to see an example of a Pokemon list where not every item is a Pokemon. So we can use the isPokemon function to check if a value is a Pokemon. So let's look at that example. Let me just close this, right? And just exit. Yeah, close this. And then we can start by defining interface Pokemon. Name string, we can say item type is a string. And then we can just create Pokemon list. We're going to give it a type of Pokemon. It's an array of Pokemon, right? So everything is fine. And then let's specify a Pokemon. We can say Pikachu item type going to be a Pokemon. So this is like maybe some inventory in a game or whatever. We can say berry, we can say item type consumable, right? So how do we check this? So for example, we can say function is Pokemon and you might do it like this. So you can say value any, for example, it returns a Boolean because it should be, hey, is true or false, Pokemon or no. Yeah, and then we can return value, we're going to have an item type. So here is from our array, right? So value item type. If it's a Pokemon, we can say true or false. And that's it. So we can create a function where we're going to use this. So we're going to filter the Pokemon. So function filter Pokemon is going to take a Pokemon list, right? It's going to be unknown array of things. So we really don't know what this can be. This can be like a Pokemon consumable, whatever. We really have no idea. So we can return a Pokemon list. We can filter each Pokemon. And here we can have this check. So for example, if is Pokemon, we're going to pass it the Pokemon, right? And here is where we're going to get into an error. So we can say Pokemon.name. And if we hover over this error, it says object is of type unknown. So that's really a problem because this really can't infer, <laughs> is it a Pokemon or not? So even if we, let me just log out, filter Pokemon, 
Pokemon list for sake of completion. So what we're trying to do is use if is Pokemon and then we want to narrow this type that's unknown to the type of Pokemon. Well, how do we do this? Because we have our function here and it's not doing what we want, right? So we get this error. So we can use, again, the title, we can use a type predicate to do that. So it's really not that complicated. So yeah, so let's see how we can do it. So we can keep value as any, of course, but instead of specifying the return type to be Boolean, we can say, using this index, we can say value, what's going to be returned is Pokemon. And now when we do this check, Pokemon unknown, when we go to here, because we determine that this is a Pokemon right here, it's Pokemon, we're passing it in, we still don't know what it is, right? And then when we get it back, it's going to be Pokemon. So I hope this makes sense and catch you in the next one.